So, welcome back, guys. Uh, those of you who didn't see yesterday's live stream, I I got to round 50, as the title says. You can probably tell. And uh, today, I'm probably now going to do like maybe an hour, two hour session, and then I have some things to do, and I'll be. Well, assuming the game will continue, I'll be live streaming more later on. Now it's like 121 in Finland. So, uh, quite early still. Uh, <coughs> Alright, here we go. Oh, wait. So I'm a little bit worried uh, since I'm on pretty high round already. And when we played three-player game uh, yesterday, or well, day before, we got this new kind of um, G spawn error, something that we exceeded a number of animation info. So I'm thinking maybe maybe this map is not very very good for high rounds since there seems to be a high risk of this getting this error since I've heard like a lot of people got it too. I'm not the only one or we are not the only one. <coughs> so uh, I'm kind of prepared for that at this point. Yes, this ain't done yet. Yeah, what am I doing? Um, I think I'm gonna make this teleporter working. <coughs> and, uh, anything you need to know, like how to get to round 50 if you want to do it yourself with the strategy I was using. Anything necessary is in yesterday's live stream, like that's round 1 to 50. So check that out if you if you want to see what I did like on, on the earlier rounds. Because at this point I'm pretty much set up, so if you're looking for info like what how to get to 50, you won't find it in this stream, yeah, it's in the previous one. Ah, oh, yeah, damn it. That, um, Leroy is locked, I, I guess, in the cell and to free him. Okay, right now I need somebody to tell me where the key is, if you know, like it wasn't in the saloon, I don't think it's... Oh wow, it spawned here, okay, never mind guys, it's over here. I'll take this one instead. Oh, I'm scared!
so that activated the portal to the first room back behind that mansion. Oh, I just wanted to do it at this point. Hey, you never know what what might happen. But uh, so far, I'm having zero downs. I haven't been even close to dying. I don't think the whole game. Uh, strategy is not that hard. You'll see in a second.
can't the big guy take these runs hostage? Those all were fast. Oh.
For a moment I thought that was the new cheese barn error, just console lag. Those of you wondering, uh, this strategy, it's really nothing new, like if you think of it. It's basically the same thing of what I've been doing in Die Rise, like since the map came out, with the Sliquifier. And later on in Mob of the Dead. Just the gun is different and the spot is different, and also how you use the gun is a little bit different. But um, the basic of this strategy, or the basis, is that die rise uh, camping strategy I've been using a lot. some new patch I think that <clears throat> and now the headless ones they actually hit you uh, uh, I mean they stay alive for a lot longer than what they used to
I actually... <coughs> I haven't watched like anybody else's buried videos on YouTube. So I don't know if this strategy is like better or worse than what others have. Honestly, I don't really care because it's working really fine for me. But uh, I can't, can't really think like how how could it be much better than this? Uh, I mean, I'm still killing them quite fast. Maybe it could be a tiny bit faster, but not not that much. And like usually when you have a fast strategy, it's way more dangerous than. Uh, than some some other strategy. Uh, this kind of like both is really safe and and not that slow either. Like it's actually pretty fast. As you can see, the round is already over. Barely just started.
Alright, hopefully we'll get a max ammo. Not too much ammo. Too much ammo left, so... I'm trying to collect those scavenger packs whenever I can.
<clears throat> hey, um, uh, which one of you or who was here yesterday, like when I went to up to 50? Who was watching that stream? Was any any of you guys um, watching it? Hmm, that was like started about twelve hours ago, I think, and finished maybe seven hours ago, or actually eight hours ago. It was like five hour live stream. You won't be picking any more fights. Four noses. Oh, so some of you were here. Hey there. And that's nice to know. Um if you still wanna check it out, like it's on my channel. Rounds one to fifty. It's kind of shows you how to survive the early rounds. Um, the strategy doesn't really take that much preparation which is uh, in my eyes it's always a good sign of a strategy that you can easily get it up and running without having to do too much stuff in the map. Of course I, I could do some optional stuff now like build all the stuff that there is and you know build a turbine trample steam and stuff but I don't really need it there that's the good part now what I do need well early on I use the AN94 uh, mostly up till 35 a little bit over uh, then I got this Reagan Mark II which is essential if you want to go higher than 40 at least. Uh, the other Reagan is okay too, the original one, Mark 1, if you have that permanent PhD flopper. So either one of the Reagans is recommended for being the second gun. Everything else you have in the box is kind of useless at these rounds. Maybe if you want it, you could have a third weapon, like as you can see I have mule kick, but I decided not to get the third gun because I wanna I wanna switch fast to my secondary weapon. And if they come too close and I have like thir three guns, uh, there's always the risk that I switch to a wrong weapon and then it's too late. So that's why I only have two, but if you wanted to have three weapons, then I'd recommend getting the AN94 for insta kills. It's right here. Well, at least for me, it's right here. You can put it wherever you want, pretty much. So I bought like four perks for first one you can see. Then rest of the perks I got by going through this mansion which is there and destroying a couple of the phantoms there. They drop a free perk bottle when you kill enough of them and that's how you can get all the seven perks. Uh, I'd say speed cola is kind of necessary when doing this with the Reagan Mark II. But stamina up and mule kick are very much optional. You don't need them too much. And then of course it's good to have claymores, at least early on. They don't do that much anymore. Maybe a couple of crawlers. And definitely you wanna have like monkey bombs when you're doing this strategy. Uh, maybe I don't know if somebody prefers the time bomb or whatever it's called. I haven't really used it a lot. Like the new equipment that can take you back in time. But the thing is that this strategy is designed for so that you don't need to go back in time. 
uh, you're not really in that that much danger that you you need to have that time bomb thing. And anyway, when you have monkeys, it actually prevents also the chance of you going down. Like if you get overrun, you can throw monkey from this window. So I think it's better to have the old-fashioned monkey bombs. I can imagine, uh, like I said earlier, I haven't watched really anybody else's strategies or anything. I don't do that sort of stuff. Like, I want to figure this stuff on my own, for the most part. Uh, and from the players I play with. I can imagine what others are doing mostly is uh, probably training in front of the place like where you can get the chalk guns and here in front of the saloon and in front of the juggernaut um, a lot of guys are probably training there um, then I've heard that there's this strategy that you camp by juggernaut and keep keep getting the new amplifier kind of thunder gun kind of trap over and over again uh, in my opinion, it's unnecessarily <coughs> risky to camp in a spot where you can't can't jump out of. Uh, like here, there's always a way out if you get overrun. Uh, on Juggernaut, you you're pretty much screwed if if they come too close and hit you uh, many times in a row like they can do uh, if you're not paying attention especially and when you're going to high rounds you can't be paying attention like 24 7 uh, sometimes you have these moments that <coughs> you're not playing as good as you would be playing like on other moments which is just you know human I guess <coughs> so that's why when Considering what kind of strategy are you going to use for high rounds, I would go with something that's slightly safer and not... Like, it can't be too safe either. Like, for example, this strategy, it wouldn't work if I didn't use this gun. Like, I'm not invincible by, by any means here. So that's what makes it also interesting for me is because there's always the slight danger and 
uh, I have to be active all the time if if I want to stay alive. Like, but in case something goes wrong, the risk here is smaller of getting killed than what it is, for example, on Juggernaut place, I think. And shit. That's also one one thing why I why I don't like to commentate too much when I'm playing because then I'm paying less attention to the game. Okay, let's get them out. Like people are always asking why I don't do commentaries too much. Well, the main reason is that my mic wasn't really working. I didn't. I didn't have a good mic until now. But also like I see some of the other YouTubers that commentate like every second they're explaining what they're doing or reacting somehow to what's happening. And well it's their style of course, like it's entertainment and all. But I would say for me it would never work. Um if I wanted to go for like high rounds and show some potential strategies for you guys, uh, I would have died long, long ago in this game too if I'd like put up a show <laughs> at the same time as playing. That's just not my style. <clears throat> so if you want to see like. Uh, entertainment, you don't care so much about the final score or something, holy shit they come fast, uh, then I suggest go watch somebody else, like you're not gonna find it on my channel, I'm gonna say it right now, <laughs> like my channel is dedicated to bring you guys like as good gameplay as possible, uh, and as good strategies as possible. Um, I always try to find the best ones, like when new maps come out. Uh, what other YouTubers do a lot, they just find one strategy and they think that it's the best one they've ever found in the map they found it in. And then they're happy with it. And then, then they make a video of it that, okay, this is, in my opinion, this is the best strategy ever, you guys should use it too. But no, uh, I'm saying this right now, like, this strategy is really good for now, but I don't know for how long. It can be good for today or for a week, I don't know. But uh, what maybe makes my channel different from the other ones is I always try to try to find better strategies and if something is working better than what this is then I'm totally starting doing it like you don't want to fell in love with your own strategies <laughs> if you could say so too much uh, just because for example if you find something by yourself that shouldn't be the reason why you should keep doing it if you if you know about something better or something more interesting so basically there's always some room for improvement when it comes to well strategies gameplay that sort of stuff
so far for those of you who are new subscribers uh, let's say my highest round so far in Black Ops 2 is I got to 70 in transit I was the first one to get to 70 and first one to post the jet gun strategy on how to get to high rounds before that in transit everybody was just using wall guns to get to high rounds such as the MP5 or AK-74U um, I kind of wanted to make something that's you know durable for even higher rounds than like mid 60s because well yeah I don't know um, 60s is okay but if you want to go higher eventually you have to give up like the wall guns they're good up till some point so I made the strategy of the jet gun on how to use it for for even higher rounds it wasn't the fastest strategy for the jet gun like there were there was this glitch that people found later that you can use it like sort of make it unlimited by taking it out and uh, putting it back again some sort of glitch uh, which made it a lot faster even and people soon got to over a hundred by using that glitch it's not the worst glitch I'm not saying but let's say it still is a glitch if Treyarch makes a patch for it and they did patch it some time ago so so now all the strategies for transit are more like they used to be at the beginning like the same speed so I got to 70 in transit then in town we made co-op with Christian we got to 69 he got disconnected unfortunately just before 70 then well we got disconnected to in bus depot on 46 I think um, then well in die rise I made a lot of runs I even tested this controversial strategy in the galva knuckle spot which I still don't think it's that much of a cheating basically there was this one spawn point in the elevator shaft like if you stayed in certain spots the zombies only came from one window and I do think that if they do so it's their choice like I don't think the player should be responsible of how the zombies spawn like that's Treyarch's job to do like uh, they did redesign the spawns later on but you know sometimes they make good spawn system for a map and sometimes they make this flawed spawn system and it kind of feels like on Xbox 360 we're sometimes just just like playing the beta version of the maps when they first come out and actually the people on PS3 get the finalized versions so so yeah there's a lot of flaws but on Die Rise I did a lot of strategies they're still on my channel if somebody wants to see so go check them out mostly camping but I also did this or posted this our restaurant strategy for training extremely fast and fun strategy to do Then on Mop of the Dead I got to 100 like two times, uh, actually I got to 116 the other time and both of the attempts ended up on suicide because I was kind of, I don't know, I just had enough at that point. 
Um, yeah, the first first run was started with Mado Master actually on co-op, but he disconnected at 70 something, and then I just finished the game with just one afterlife and went to 100. Um, yeah, then then I actually found this really good strategy for Mob of the Dead where like people used to do this uh, acid trap strategy in it um, where you run from MP5 to the cafeteria room and when the trap is on they stayed in the cafeteria, but I kind of flipped it for myself, so so I was actually running it reversed. I think I, I was the first one to post that for solo. And then a lot of other guys started doing it too, so that's, I guess, always a good sign of a like, good strategy. So basically what I did was... Uh, I ran from cafeteria to MP5. Now I had this, like the blue tomahawk, Hell's Redeemer. And while the trap was on, the zombies were spawning at the MP5 room, and I could still like kill them at the same time with the uh, tomahawk. Right there, I didn't find the green mist thing. So I've pretty much done like a, I think I've done potential strategy in most of the maps so far. Uh, I haven't really gone for high rounds in a lot of the maps, especially the survival maps. I'm not really a big fan of them. Uh, I played them like max three times each, or well, anyway, not that much. So I'm kind of more specialized to this. DLC, uh, these DLC maps. Um, the original maps that came with the game, they're always good, but of course the companies, they want to make better maps for DLC to, to give people a reason to actually buy the DLC, uh, because we're gonna buy the game anyway, so whatever comes with the game doesn't really matter that much like if they want to sell us a season pass which costs like 40 euros extra so they really need to make like good content for the season pass and I think they've succeeded so far in Black Ops 2 not complaining at all just happy that they at least make like some decent maps because if there was only transit and all the survival maps that would be pretty much horrible <laughs> at this point. But so far my favorite map would probably be Die Rise, like I said in yesterday's livestream. That's almost like better than the old maps from Black Ops 1 and World at War. But like, in my book at least, it goes up there with, with the best maps.
then a good second comes like yesterday I would have said only Mob of the Dead would be a good second after Die Rise, but now I'm starting to like this map more. I'm not gonna say it's like remarkably good just yet. But it's okay, like it's not a huge disappointment. Buried, I mean. So this one and Mob of the Dead kind of go I don't know, they're like having the second place. That's my favorite map for Black Ops 2, that is. Um, of course, if we take all the old maps and all the games I played in those, then I don't know if these maps would be even in the top 10, to be honest. Maybe. Think of in thinking of like what what makes a zombies map good in my eyes like the Treyarch ones I'm talking about now uh, custom maps they're they're all of their like own category but Treyarch ones usually are best like when you know that when you come online you, you log on to PS3 or Xbox Live or or Wii U or PC and you know that you can just go like to public match maybe and have like one or two hours fun time like have a small game in it or go play it with your friends uh, have some fun or even solo but mainly why I brought up the public match thing is that what I'm kind of missing from the old maps that I wish they would put to these new maps is that you could go you could go pretty much straight away playing with randoms and have good games in the maps like do some awesome revives and clutches and stuff like that um, because that we don't really have in these new maps and why is that that it becomes different than what it used to be? Uh, the maps are just so much bigger than what they used to be. Um, and when they become big enough, uh, it tends to make that, especially when you're playing with randoms, they start to go in their... like everybody splits up to separate parts of the map. And then when somebody goes down somewhere in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you notice that there's no chance you're gonna make make the revive anymore. Like there there would have been always chance in Black Ops 1 unless you were playing like Moon. You could always make the revive and people would stay together a lot more. So I used to do that a lot in Black Ops 1, like I I just went to play with randoms and went for a high revive streak or whatever. <laughs> I don't do that anymore because you can't really in these maps. Only maybe if you're playing with a party or if you're playing survival maps. I really can't imagine myself doing like 100 revives in in for example this buried uh, and I know if I would even try to make like a lot of revives then if I go down one time it would probably mean that nobody would revive me <laughs> it usually does and that is really frustrating because 
Yeah. Kinda expect that if you get like a lot of revives, then your teammates would at least revive you that one time that you go down. Usually it doesn't go that way. So that's pretty much the only thing what I like about the survival maps, such as like Bastipot Farm, Town, even Nuke Town. They're good for good f for playing with randoms. see these new maps um, what I don't like about them mainly I'm not saying that I don't like them new maps I do like every single one of them I do like uh, the things I don't like about is that if you're trying to get like a game in them it almost like you have to prepare yourself, like, have at least like two or three hours to play one game. Like, come on, one game shouldn't be that long if you just want to play for fun. Like, high rounds, of course, are a different thing because they're always going to take time, no matter which map you play. But if you just want to have, like, short game and do something in it, it's not really possible anymore. Like, well, of course, if if the team isn't that great, then yeah, it's possible, but if the team is good and people know what they're doing, then the game just gonna take forever. Uh, and when you're having four players in the game, uh, the rounds aren't even going that fast, as, as you guys know, like... There's like probably three times more zombies than there is on solo. So yeah. <laughs> so I kinda like playing solo in the new maps or two players. And one other thing that I like doing in the new maps is all those like wall gun challenges, they're always fun. Um and I'm actually looking forward to doing some in, in Berry too, especially when you can like... Uh, yeah, that's a cool idea that you can put the wall guns wherever you want. That's kind of like... Okay, let's take this maximum. off. Yeah, that's almost as if Wonderhar, David Wonderhar, had heard or had watched my challenge videos and... Or, actually not him, but, you know, Jimmy Zelinski or some zombies guys. Holy shit. I hate the headless ones. They're the most dangerous ones. Ironically. But yeah, what I was saying, that's... All these... Like this idea of that you can draw the wall guns wherever you like. It's as if uh, the zombies development team had had watched my challenges and thought of like what could make them more interesting, like what could bring more to them. At least to me it feels like it because uh, now instead of just one challenge each weapon, <laughs> we could even do like seven different, for example, A and 94 challenges. I'm probably not going to do seven different, but theoretically, you could... 
because you can put it to like I don't know if it's seven different spots or what but still like you can choose between warriors different locations so that's one of the cool ideas they had for this map So again, like, why I don't don't do rape train mostly in the new maps? Well, rape train. That was the thing when Black Ops One came out. Like, that was the thing that everybody wanted to do, uh, me included. That was like 2011 thing. But now we're living 2013, and. Like, it's still cool, I'm not saying that, but it's always, like, interesting to find, like, new ways of playing. And in this case, uh, Treyarch, the development team, they really are starting to promote, like, different strategies than just running around, which is kind of easy to do, like, since people, most people have learned to do it by now. If they would just add the same same strategy to every new map, that would just make them way too boring in my opinion. Like, I wanna have something new. And I'm kinda happy that they they started putting these new possible strategies in the game, which is all the new camping strategies. Uh, and that goes for every DLC so far. All or most of the best strategies, at least for first 50 rounds, in Die Rise, Mobile to Death, and Buried, they're all camping strategies. Like Rape Train is is good for like first maps, and then and of course like Black Ops One and World of War maps, but. There has been change. 
if you check my past videos, like what I posted of the first CLCs, uh, think. Well, of die rise, I actually haven't even posted my fastest strategy, like when we got to 50 with two player. It might be on some live stream, but I'm planning to release it soon. Uh, fastest strategy in die rise is probably by the first room elevator shaft like when you go down that's fast and it's super fun to do like way more fun than anything involved involving running in my opinion although die rise has some really good running spots such as the room with uh, with the hole in the floor and also the restaurant good good for running but Still, I think the camping strategies are more interesting in it. They're really not too safe, not too dangerous, if you know what you're doing. Then, on Mob of the Dead, I believe the best strategy for first 50 rounds. I actually posted that like in 10 different parts, like some time ago. It's by the tunnel. Uh, near Juggernaut, but on the opposite side of the fence. I do do believe that's the best strategy for, for like first 50 rounds in Mob of the Dead. And that's also like, it's kind of like both. It's not purely camping, it's not purely training. It's kind of like both. Anyway, the gun that I was using is the Blunder Gap. Then I wasn't surprised at all that when this map came out, that when I found out that they put this Paralyzer or Pack a Punch Petrifier inside or in it, uh, I wasn't surprised that it's actually also made for camping. Or holding your ground, whether you're playing solo or co-op. So this just um, proves my theory that Treyarch is—they're trying to find like, and they have successfully found new ways to play this game, not just the old, old running around like a headless chicken way, but also like more let's just say like str strategic ways I don't know if I said it right but anyway I first played this map like day one, day two. I was kind of afraid that this map was going to be different than the first two DLCs. But at the end of day two, uh, I actually realized that yes, they uh, they actually continued the same same map design uh, tradition what they started in the first two maps. So. Yeah, I like it, definitely like it. Also, one addition to what I just said like earlier, uh, why I think it's also cool that they're they're starting to do these maps like more for camping, 
is because it's actually it's nothing new really. It's just basically going back to World at War. Like people who played World at War, uh, the first four maps might still remember that. Um, the strategies back in the day, in most of the maps, they were all about, um, you know, holding your ground. Like, for example, in Nocturne Toten, everybody was camping in the grenade corner. In Berukt, there were there was like the kitchen, then there was the MP40 trap place. Well, Shinonuma was like different. It was actually the biggest map probably for and the best map for training in World at War that's when people started getting to like over 1000 rounds and something ridiculous and some people like that but personally I think the map is too easy when you can get to around 1000 no problem <laughs> I don't know about you guys but there needs to be some challenge um, then the Reese. That was kind of like both. It was a mixture. You could either run around the map, although I don't think that many people did back in the day of World of War. Then you could camp like. I think the place most people camped in the Reese was the catwalk, where where the STG is. And the final teleporter. So actually, what I like about these new maps that is that they're actually going back to World of War in the sense of the strategies, what you can use.
I'm attempting at the moment just to get to 60. If I get to 60, that'll be the end of this stream. And then I have to go do some stuff. And if the game is still going, and I'll be continuing like in a couple of hours. Before this map came out I was actually kind of afraid that they do do the first hard map for Black Ops 2. Kind of like Shangri-La was in Black Ops 1. Um, probably the hardest map besides like of course like not the Rune Toten and I don't know 5. I never thought 5 was really hard map but anyway. So I was afraid that <clears throat> this map was going to be as hard as Shangri-La for starters. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> so far, I think this is like... I don't know, in top 3, actually. At least, like, you know, of the easiest map in Black Ops 2. Um, other thing what I was afraid of this map, like, after first day, was that... That do we really need to make, like, all the buildables for each game? Like, because parts are kind of hard to find. Even if you know where to look for them. And it really will... And it takes a lot of time to make all the buildables. So I was afraid that they force us to make them every game in order to pretty much do anything else in the map. Well, luckily that's not the case. Like you've seen here, like I've gone to 58 so far. I haven't done a single buildable, so you don't need them for anything. Uh, it's all just optional.
What? Is it actually over already? Probably should start doing some other strategy, like this one's going way too fast. Okay, so for those of you who haven't played the map yet or who don't know where the bank is, this is where you need to head if you want to get to the bank. Here's the deposit site, but as you can see, mine's full like long time ago. There's two and a, 250k at the moment, so I can't really do anything with this money that I have. Which is kind of a shame. So what do you guys think? Like you, uh, I've been doing this strategy for like God knows how long, pretty much the whole game actually. What do you guys think? Should I start doing something else? Like would it be a good, good thing to do? Would it be necessary in your opinion? Or should I just stick with this strategy for now?
Um, so some of you said that you'd like to see like a different strategy. Some of you said that it's working fine and keep doing it. Um, well, I could probably do something else. I could probably use it for getting even higher rounds, but you know, if something like if I don't know of anything better, then I'm I'm not gonna start doing anything else until like since this strategy is still working, uh, it's the best one I know at the moment. So unless there's some like info that some other strategy is way better, then I might consider cha changing this. It's kind of like what what this like you know there was this PS3 launch uh, Jack Jack Tretton who is like the president of Sony's Sony America like Sony Computer Entertainment America he said something like of like why Sony didn't change the used game policy for PS4 why why didn't they put like this always on future or 24 hour log on required like Microsoft did? Well, he just said like, like, why fix something that isn't broken? Like, because they're not really changing anything. They're just, you know, continuing from PS3 and like, making the same policies which have been working so far that you can trade in your games you can sell them and stuff so I'm um, maybe not the best example but you know kind of on the same lines with him like uh, I don't know if I try to do something else it might end up in catastrophe and it might also end up like so that the rounds take way longer than they do now. Oh, come on. Crawlers tried to sneak behind me.
Alright guys, the stream is coming to an end. Like I said, I was gonna go for 60. And... I'm going to be back in a couple of hours. There's something I need to do now. So, um... Those of you st still watching, if you've enjoyed the stream, feel free to like it. And I know, know that you guys want probably more streams if there's like a lot of likes. So, feel free to do so. And there, the last one pleaded out, so... I'm gonna pause it in a second. Alright, there we go. So, if you want to see how the game continues, just visit my channel. Uh, there will be usually, like, the main future video will be if there's any live streams. And you can also check your sub box, but mainly go to the channel if you want to see if I'm live streaming. From now on, I'll try to put like a warning sort of like uh, I try to schedule the live streams like at least a couple of minutes before I actually start them so that so that most of you would be able to like be from the start if you if that's what you want so I'll try to give like warning that what time it's going to be and that will be in the sub box so check it out oh round 60 and so far zero downs I did get a couple of red screens in this session but um, yeah still still no downs so I'm quite happy about it so see you guys later